Welcome to Naked Without Shame, Theology of the Body and What It Means to Be Human. Coming up right after this. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Open your hearts, open up your hearts to Christ. The reason life is the joy that comes from God and is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ. He is the hope of the world. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome back. Um, my name is Kelly Reed, and I will be your host for this show and uh, tell you a little bit about myself and then introduce my co-host here. Um, I have been, um, I guess, enraptured with Theology of the Body for about 15 years. A friend of mine introduced this to me, and when I started reading it and learning about it, I was just amazed at the beauty of what uh, Pope St. John Paul had promulgated through the Theology of the Body. And um, for me as a cradle Catholic, but one that had really kind of, like everybody maybe had a lot of questions, kind of fallen away from my faith at different times in my life, this was the answer to so many things. It, it gave the why behind what the church teaches, which is something that I somehow missed along the way. So it became my passion and um, I studied it. I was even able to study for a little while in Rome and um, got a little bit deeper into that. And then um, I also was able to teach at, um, at Notre Dame Academy in Toledo. I was chair of the theology department. And this was a course that I was able to develop. And I found that my students really, um, it resonated with them because it spoke to who you are as a human person and what God's plan is for you. And uh, so I'm just thrilled to be able to be here and share one of my passions with um, those of you that are watching. And now I'd like to introduce Kerrigan Gardner, who's my co-host. Oh, yes. Happy to be here. Um, so my name is Kerrigan, and it's really cool because I had Kelly in class um, at Notre Dame Academy. So that was about seven or eight years ago. Um, so she was my Theology of the Body <laughs> teacher. So it's cool to be back here and talking about that same topic. Um, but since then, um, went throughout college, didn't go to a Catholic school, although I'm Catholic. Um, so that was an eye-opening experience to be, you know, surrounded by people of all different faiths and their own lifestyle. Um, I didn't meet another Catholic for about a year, like a year and a <laughs> half. So that was interesting to me. Um, but also I got married um, over a year ago. So living out theology of the body in a new way, it's, um, it's been cool. It's been fun. And I'm excited to chat about this. Great. Tonight's episode is titled, God Wants You to Have Great Sex. And that is true. And um, that is a little bit scandalous, yeah? Because God and sex in the same sentence. But um, I think it, we're going we're gonna to have a discussion about it. And then the whole, the whole course of the program is going to be able to really fill that in for us. And, um, and Karen is going to be here to help ask some questions and kind of help me to flesh this out a little bit more. Um, the reason that I think this is so important as a title is because we live in such an over-sexualized culture right now. I mean, we are just bombarded with images and messages, and we have a lot of really messed up ideas about sex. And so I think it's important if we can get back to what God's plan is, what God's truth is about this, that it can change our lives. It changed mine. It can change relationships. It can change marriages. And I guess part of me as I was learning this was sort of like, well, why didn't anybody tell me this? Or at least I missed it. So hopefully this will be able to really give everyone a deeper understanding of um, the importance of, uh, I guess, sex in the way that God created us male and female and um, that we can look at some of those questions. But now for a little commercial break. I'd really like to invite you to check out Awaken Nation. If you enjoy this show or any of the other shows that are produced by Awaken, um, this is an opportunity to help this ministry to continue to grow and to keep going and, and produce these really great um, and professional um, programs. And you can go to awakencatholic.org slash donate and any kind of donation you can make, whether it's monthly and just, you know, the cost of a cup of coffee even, 
or if you want to do a one-time, um, anything you can do to help to keep the ministry going is greatly appreciated. And uh, last announcement before we dive into today's discussion is the Hallow app. So I'm a fan of it. I know everyone at Awaken Catholic is. Um, it's really cool. So it's a Catholic meditation app. So there's a lot of meditation apps out there, but this is specifically designed for our Catholic brothers and sisters. So it's really neat. And what's cool is that you can go to um, hallow.app slash awaken. And when you sign up through awaken, you can get one month for free of the premium version. So go check it out. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Kerrigan. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important that we start with prayer before we get into any of this and really just invoke the Holy Spirit. So we could just take a minute. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is from John 10. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus, you've created us out of love in order to love and be loved. Open our minds and our hearts as we begin this journey together to discover all that you want to give us in order that we might respond to your invitation to know your love and live the life that you call us to. And we ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So. I'm ready. So first episode, we should probably lay, you know, a good foundation for what theology of the body is. Sure. So can you explain basically like Absolutely. the definition? What is it? Absolutely. For people who aren't familiar with this, it's very scriptural based. This is really what the church has always taught, but it's just a rearticulation for our time. And that's the way the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit works. I mean, yeah. all we have to do is look at the culture. And this is the way then that God is going to provide to respond to some of the issues that are there. And so um, it, it was John Paul's first major teaching of his pontificate. And it really talks about the role of the body within the mystery of God, which is, can sound kind of big and yeah, maybe even a yeah. little convoluted. <laughs> but really, uh, a lot of people think it's just about sex. And it is about that, but it's about so much more. It really delves into what it means to be a human person. It answers those deep questions that we all ask and human beings have asked since the beginning of time. You know, why mm -hmm. am I here? What is my purpose? We can say, well, why, especially in our times today, why did God make us male and female? Yeah. You know, um, because we have so many issues surrounding gender and sexuality today. Uh, and ultimately, what is the meaning of life? So we're going to be able to flesh out, hopefully, some of those questions so that people can reflect on that, but do it through a lens where God is going to, I think, really enlighten us and see things in a new way. Um, Theology of the Body came about, well, actually, when you look at John Paul's life, um, he began being inspired like in the, as early as 1950 wow. with um, this understanding of what had always been taught. And part of that goes to what his background is. We'll get into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, he, he proceeded to share this after he became Pope. Every, every Wednesday that the Pope is in Rome, he has what's called a Wednesday audience. Mm -hmm. And typically it will be held in St. Peter's Square and anyone can come. If the weather's bad, they do it inside in a big auditorium. Okay. But for the first five years of his pontificate, for 129 of those Wednesday audiences, he pronounced the theology of the body in little snippets. So it wasn't like he was reading from a book or anything like that, right. but um, you know, shared that. And actually, if you were to, after he passed away, it was all put together in a book, and this is it. So man and woman, he created them, Theology of the Body. And it is 600 and some pages of deep philosophy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do in this program is use, um, you know, real life, understandable terminology so that we can get this because it's meant for everyone, everyone to understand. Right, right. You said 129 Wednesdays? 129 Wednesdays from 1979 wow. to 1984. Yes. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of Wednesdays. Yeah, That's a lot of is. theology of the body. It is a lot of Wednesdays. <laughs> and actually, the Pope's biographer, George Weigel, has said that theology of the body is going to be like a time bomb that is set to go off in the third millennium of the church. And 
we can sort of see this as it's beginning to catch on places, especially mm -hmm. in response to some of the issues that we have in the culture today. So right. it really is exciting to kind of be um, on the cutting edge of all of this as it's beginning to really unfold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. So can we dive more into like who um, Saint, now he's a Saint, John yes. Paul II is and yes. like who he was while he was, you know, talking about all of this? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's really important to kind of get a little idea of, of who he is and, and um, I have to say he's, he's one of my personal heroes and the more I learned about the Holy Father, the more I was just enamored with him. Um, I was so fortunate to be able to spend much of my adult life so far under his pontificate and I remember I was able to go to Rome once and I saw him in um, one of the audiences and we were probably about 20 feet away from the Holy Father mm, cool. and he walked by and I just burst into tears and I'm not, oh. I'm not a crying person so <laughs> to speak but I was just overcome with emotion yeah. I, I can't tell you what it was but he has a, had a very special presence about him a truly a genius truly a genius and so gifted but um, he was born in a small town in Poland and uh, his name was Carol Wotia, and he really endured so much personal suffering in his early life. By the time he was 20 years old, he had lost his mother when he was eight, his brother when he was 11, and then his father had passed away as well. And during that time, um, there was Nazi occupation of Poland, and um, he decided to Go, well, he went to college, started going to college, and then he decided he wanted to go into the seminary. So he had to do that all in secret, basically. Um, and in 1946, he was finally ordained a priest. Um, one of, well, many of his passions, uh, he loved poetry, he loved the theater, he was very much an athlete, he enjoyed skiing and hiking and mountain climbing, mm -hmm. and um, just, you know, very outdoorsy. But his passion, much of his passion, was spending time with youth and young married couples. Okay. And I think it was through those encounters that he really gleaned a deeper understanding of the difference between male and female relationships, and especially marriage. Um, that, and of course, the Holy Spirit was inspiring him all along. Yeah. But um, he, his insights are amazing. And people will say as they read through Theology of the Body, well, how can a celibate priest understand the intricacies of sex and you know marriage and all of that? Well, it's because he was so close to these couples and they shared with him and um, mm -hmm. and probably also through the sacrament of reconciliation without breaking the seal of the confessional, you know, he, <laughs> yeah. he learned a lot as well. Right, so, right. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. Later once after he was um, after he was ordained, he studied philosophy. So he is very much known as a philosopher mm -hmm. and uh, his philosophy is based in the human person. So it's really personalism and it's all about the dignity of the human person so everything that he did in his pontificate was centered around the dignity of the human person all of his encyclicals that he wrote he was fluent in 12 languages oh, i mean the guy man. was really brilliant and then wow. also some of his major accomplishments um he was a big part of the peaceful dismantling of the soviet regime along with ronald reagan and margaret mm -hmm. thatcher and um he was also involved in interfaith dialogue, di dialogue <laughs> between um, Judaism, Islam, and, and Christianity, and, okay. and really did a lot to build bridges there. Wow. Uh, he promulgated a new catechism in 1992, and he also canonized almost 500 saints during his pontificate, I which did lasted not know that. yeah 27 years. 27 wow. years. So he died in 2005, and um, then was canonized. And his feast day is October 22nd. All so, right. Yeah. This is a funny throwback. It, I literally did not think about it until now. But I remember, we've known each other for a little while. A little while. I think we were at Chuck E. G's. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had to be eight years old. Maybe, I don't know, around 10. And I remember you coming up to me and giving me my first rosary, or oh. at least from what I remember. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it was blessed by JP2. Oh, my gosh. Yes, because I, when I, I was he, in Rome, yeah. I brought back all of these things and I had uh -huh. taken them 
lug them all over to the, you know, to the Vatican. And then uh-huh. the Pope gets a papal blessing. And so mm-hmm. whatever religious items you have. Oh, that's right. so cool. Oh, Chuck and cheese. That's really, <laughs> Got that's a great. date, John Paul, yeah. wherever you are. <laughs> that's a neat memory. That is. That oh, is. gosh. So I really loved what you said about the ticking time bomb mm-hmm. or time mm-hmm. bomb. I, maybe right. I made right. up the word ticking. So can we talk about like what theology of the body means like today? Like, why is it so necessary in our like current society? (laughs) Well, (laughs) maybe you can speak more to this because you're probably much more in tune with it, you know, being your age and everything. But it's, we, like I said before, our, our culture is so over-sexualized right now. And um, we're just bombarded constantly. And Mm -hmm. I think what that does is it kind of desensitizes us to things. And all we have to do is kind of look around and just see how casual sex is anymore. And I mm-hmm. think that was one of the things that I really, I noticed over the years when I was teaching, even with my students, how, you know, with their relationships, um, it, it was just, you know, a very, very casual thing. And maybe you can kind of give some perspective for that yeah. a little bit. I mean, I would say I definitely noticed that more so when I went off to college. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I was very thankful I was, um, you know, received Catholic education, kindergarten through senior in high school. Um, so I feel like I was always, you know, surrounded by people of just like strong morals, values, very similar to, I don't know, like how I live my life mm-hmm. and then you go to college, it's like, oh <laughs> man, I feel sheltered. Um, but no, I, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying. It's people on their own agenda, um, just doing whatever they want, whatever they want that day with whoever they want. And um, yeah, I just felt like, man, I don't know how people live this way. You know, there's just no fulfillment in it for me. Um, I don't see God's plan in it, so mm-hmm. I definitely agree. Yeah. yeah, I think too because our our um, culture becomes more secularized too. We take God out of it, and part mm-hmm. of the reason for that is because you know, if you believe in God, then you have a morality mm-hmm. that you would follow. Hopefully, at least that you're aware of. Because some, <laughs> I suppose in a worst case scenario that you have guilt at least. Mm-hmm. But when you take God out of the picture, then your morality becomes very relative. It's whatever you want. And just mm-hmm. like you were saying, so people can do whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it with whoever and however, as long as everybody's in agreement. Yeah. And, um, you know, when, when you get into such a relative state, then truth becomes something that is just well, it's relative, you yeah. know, and there are so many people today that don't believe in objective truth or that there are some things that are always right and always wrong, that everything is gray. So there's just so much confusion, I think. Um, and because of that, we see, you know, uh, especially when it comes to the dignity of the human person, which is what, you know, John Paul was was all about, that people even become disposable, that relationships become mm. disposable. All we have to do is look at you know, the divorce rate and, Mm -hmm. or now they say the divorce rate's going down, but that's because nobody's getting married anymore. You know, Mm -hmm. there's no reason to get married. People think they can have all of the benefits of marriage without having all the responsibilities. So when we take morality out of situation, then it just trickles down and, you know, the, the whole fabric begins to unravel. And, um, I think, I think that's, we're seeing that we're seeing that play out and, and just so many people that are so broken and so hurting because we're not, we're not created to be used and tossed aside. We're created to be loved. And, Mm -hmm. um, when we get into, you know, the meat of what theology of the body is, we'll see what God's plan is. And I think we'll understand that, you know, we're all created for more, Mm -hmm. much better than what the world is giving us. So, um, there, there's a reason and an agenda behind all of this that we'll be exploring. And mm-hmm. we just really need God's truth. And maybe we'll be, we'll be able to get that out there. People will make up their own mind. But mm-hmm. I find that this really resonates. So right. we'll see. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and while we're on that topic, maybe some of the some of the topics we will be discussing as we go through the, the different shows. Um, why did God make us male and female? You know, you ever think about that? We could all be asexual. We could be like earthworms and just mate with ourselves. But... That probably wouldn't be as much fun. (laughs) Um, So what is love? Um, 
What is marriage? Who's called to it and why? You know, not everybody is. Um, homosexuality and gender issues, those are huge today. So we'll be, you know, really looking at that. Um, contraception, sterilization, pornography. I found so much in my own youth growing up in the church that I never had an explanation for so much of what the rules were. It was just all about the rules. And I think you get to a certain point in your life and it's sort of like, you know, I have a brain, I can make up my own mind. And so therefore nobody's telling me why, and I'm not taking the energy to find out. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore I can do whatever I want to do. But I think once we know the answer why to, for example, why the church teaches about all these things, it just changes everything. It mm -hmm. certainly changed my life, my perspective, changed my marriage. And um, so I'm hoping that maybe we can answer those questions and, and say why, right. and that people will have that information so they can really inform their own conscience and everything. Mm -hmm. So There you go. Love yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. So what's a good like starting off point for Theology of the Body? Yeah, there are so many different aspects to it, and we will break it down into pieces. But I suppose a, a great place to start would be um, Matthew 19, 1 to 8. And Kerrigan, would you like to just read this scripture? I mean, yeah, it's right there if you'd like it. to read it, and then we can kind of break it down. All right. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. Great crowds followed him, and he cured from he cured them there. Some Pharisees approached him and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Okay. So Jesus is explaining to those wonderful Pharisees that were always trying to trip him up that, you know, when Moses said that you could give your wife a bill of divorce, it was because your hearts were hardened because there was no way around that. I mean, he said, well, I guess I, I got to, you know, I got to give into this because they're, they're so hardened to the truth. But Jesus says it's not intended to be that way. If you go back to the beginning and you see what God's original plan was, you would see that that is not the case. So that's what we're going to do. And we'll delve into that too. Um, so, you know, I, I'm hoping that we'll be able to look at again, the why behind so many of these questions that we have. So yes, God does want you to have great sex, but he has put boundaries around it to protect it. When we understand the meaning, the beauty, the holiness, the sanctity of what the sexual act really is meant to be, then we'll understand why God put the boundary around it and why anytime we misuse it, there is a consequence and there's going to be pain. And the amount of pain that we suffer when we misuse that gift is going to be determined by what we do and mm -hmm. the choices that we make. Right. So on that note, what I'd love to do is to invite you back next time. We're going to get into this, into the meat of it, get into it more deeply. And um, I want to leave you with a phrase that Pope John Paul used throughout his pontificate. Be not afraid. So don't be afraid to really come at this with an open mind, to be able to maybe question some of the beliefs that you've held and to really be available for God's truth to come and penetrate your heart and then to change your life. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Kerrigan. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time on Naked Without Shame. This show and all media on Awaken Catholic is made possible by the Awaken Nation and the Hollow app. The Awaken Nation is a community of people like you who support all things Awaken for as cheap as a cup of coffee a week and get access to exclusive content. Learn more by visiting awakencatholic.org slash donate.
Hallo is the only audio guided Catholic prayer app focused on contemplative prayer and traditional Catholic meditation such as Lexio Divina, Daily Examine, and the Rosary. We here at Awaken all use Hallo every day and love it. To learn more or give it a try, visit hallo.app/awaken.